Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today I got a brand new gaming headset to look at. This is from a company called Tronsmart, and this is the Glary. We will get into that name, Glary, a little bit later. But for right now, let's talk about the company, Tronsmart. I have actually seen uh, their items for sale quite a bit when I've been shopping. However, this will be the first time I've actually purchased something from them. So Tronsmart is based in Shenzhen, China and they make items very similar to this so headsets, Bluetooth speakers, etc. They, I believe their first items went on to the store shelves in what about 2013 although the company might be a little older than that but anyway kinda gives you an idea of when they've been around okay so now why this headset I have more than enough gaming headsets but I decided to pick this one up because of some of the features that it was promising in conjunction with its price point. So before we go any further and we do a look around the box and all that, I thought I'd just put up a quick um, kind of the highlights, um, if you will. And yeah, so let me zoom in on that. All right, so I'm just gonna scroll this paper. I, I guess basically just took this from their website and printed it out on paper big enough to see. So we see that they're claiming they have 7.1 virtual surround sound, 50 millimeter audio drivers, we have colorful LED lighting that evidently can be controlled by pushing buttons. There's a noise canceling mic with omnidirectional. So, and oh, I should, there you go. So, evidently can filter out ambient noise as well. There's an inline control for the microphone. There are multiple equalizer settings. It looks like four. Exceptional comfort. So, apparently, there's soft memory foam. And uh, so you can just read it all. Okay, there you go. So, evidently comfortable. There's strong compatibility. Well, that's just basically because it's a USB connector. So if you think of an item that has a USB port, you can probably use this with it. And then also there, um, okay, there they're talking about there's some um, audio software. I think you have to download something so to get that. So anyway, all right. So Tron Smart. So you can see some of the stuff we were talking about with the promotional highlights. All right. We also notice that this one is one of those headsets where the the band is actually kind of separated from what actually goes on the top of your head. So, and by the way, this is my first headset with this kind of configuration. Almost all my other headsets have the, this metal stuff in here. So, this is new for me. Maybe not for you, but it'll be interesting to see how that differs. All right, and you can see where the LEDs are going to come from. There's the extended mic. And again, some of the stuff we already talked about, like the 50 film, 50 millimeter drivers and whatnot. And then was that 7.1 virtual? And of course, it has colorful LEDs. Okay, on this side, just glary, gaming headset. Over here, same deal. On the bottom, nothing. On the back, okay. So there we get an idea what that inline mic looks like, or sorry, inline controls. And um, yeah, so reading this, apparently those uh, there's leather too, not just memory foam, but leather as well. So that's kind of cool. And then talk about LED lights again, the 50 millimeters, the 7.1. Hmm. Looks like the mic lights up as well. All right. Now here are some specs. In case these aren't coming up, I'm just going to go ahead and put a um, still picture of these so you can read them a little clearer and pause the video if you need to. Okay, so that we get a little warning talking about how to avoid getting hearing damage. So perhaps these are pretty loud that they felt they needed to put that warning there. Good advice to follow regardless, but anyway. Um, we have a QR code down there. It's all those icons. And then you can see this is a 2019 um, product there with a date stamp. And we have, of course, the barcodes. Okay. All right, so overall impressions of the packaging, it works. Well, the first thing you notice is that it's a very dark packaging. So we have a black background with, um, for the most part, black item on top of it. And uh, you can kind of see here with the lighting in the room that the, the headphones kind of reflect more than the background. So you, there is some contrast there. But again, you're going to need the light to make that happen. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a, something on the cover. And then what you'll see is the name, the brand, and then these little um, orange 
little bubble, information bubbles, which I think orange might be their like kind of brand color because you see orange on the retail hanger as well. Um, companies will use this um, black on black type packaging scheme because the I guess the idea is that black kind of gives it a more kind of a hardcore, edgy kind of look. And also, if you don't subscribe to that, it also can be more of like an elite. So think about, you know, those club memberships, Onyx level, you know, and the card is like all black or something. So, you know, VIP, I guess. So I get why they do it. But anyway, so I'd say the packaging works. A little more contrast would be good, but it works. It's okay. Now, but let's get to what I was promising earlier, and that is to talk about this name, Glary. Okay, now I understand. For the most part, the name might not mean anything to you and you don't care. All you know, need to know it is long enough to put it, in, find it on the store shelf, glary, put it in the shopping cart. However, I usually go through the way the package looks is because I understand a big part of it is those customers that might not be initially looking for this particular item, but decide to buy it because it looks cool or it catches their eye. So, Things, the first impressions can be very important if that's the where a lot of your customers are going to be coming from. So now let's get back to this name, Glary. Ugh, okay, so it can tell it wouldn't have been my first choice by far to name this thing, but I understand why they went with this name. Probably because the person naming this isn't like a native English speaker. Is Glare, at least for the common use in English, isn't a positive thing. And I don't think they quite knew that. And beyond all that, if you just kind of want to be a little less mature, Glary eh, doesn't really, it isn't the most hardcore type name. It's kind of on the other side of the spectrum, if you know what I mean. Okay, but with all that out of the way, let's go and do the unboxing. Okay, so this is sealed with these little um, circle stickers. Got two there, and then there's the flap here. So I will go ahead and just uh, peel back these little stickers. All right, got those off. Now flip open this tab. Okay, that was the retail hanger. Okay, so there's the item. First thing I notice is that it is not in like a plastic tray. So it looks like the item is just protected by this uh, styrofoamy type bag. We have a few things on the bottom. Nothing else in the box. Okay, so we have a warranty card, some contact information. There is, um, I don't know if it's coming up in camera, but there's a number for US and Canada support. There's also a global number. So, and this is in English, obviously. So, it does seem that this might be intended to sell outside of China. And then we have Tronsmart here. It must be the actual manual. And okay, so we have other languages. France, or French, Italian, and then, of course, English up front here. And there's some of the specs we've already seen. So I'll read through this, but... Okay, so we do have a manual. Now let's get to the actual item. Again, no plastic tray, just this bag protecting it. All right, take them out here. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> These ear cups are way larger than I originally expected. But, um, yeah. Okay. So, let's talk about... First of all, this cord is quite thick. Um, I don't know if it's coming up here, but, yeah. So, then we have a cover on the USB. There it is. That might even be plated. If so, that's a plus. Here's our um, inline control. Jeez, everything on this is just kind of uh, upscaled a couple sizes bigger than you would normally expect. I mean, if you get an idea like this thing here, it's almost like a t small TV remote. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we have a volume up, volume down, mic, LEDs, and EQ. So we got some pretty cool, um, very intuitive controls here. And also, notice the volume are buttons, not a roller wheel, um, which is good. Um, my experience with those wheels where you like roll the wheel on the side to increase and decrease the volume, that usually ends up being one of the, um, what goes first on the headphones. And you start getting that where you have to tap it to get the sound to go back to both ears. So without that, hopefully that issue will not happen. So anyway, but yeah, again, 
right. All right. Um, so following the cord up here, we come to where it actually connects to the headset. Um, it does look like it's reinforced here. Feels rather well anchored. Here's our mic. So we have a yeah. This does yep it flexes and holds its position. Does it go in and out? Doesn't appear to. So it's just going to be out here. So position it where you need it to be. It looks like we have this as a button, or perhaps no, no, no. We don't need the button because remember the button's down here. So this is just a light. Well, and of course it also picks up the sound, but so I'm assuming this glows. Okay, so then we have the LED, as according to the picture on the box, it's going to be around the rim, the ring here. So, okay, we've got the brand name there. Oh, um, I should tell you, these ear cups, this part here, as you may have guessed, is a high reflective plastic. Um, this here, I'm going to see if this is metal, this part. Yeah, okay, so this is probably like an aluminum here. Uh, talking about these, uh, here, maybe you can hear it, listen. <laughs> so yeah, there's a considerable amount of cushion there. Okay, going up, let's talk about this. We have, here's the, what adds the tension, i.e. what holds it on your head. Guys, gives it its spring, right? So that's all up here. The thing that actually goes on top of your head, as you can see, is quite deformable. So, yeah. Um, like, all right, and there's some padding in there, but compared to that, it's it's not much. But it's enough, especially since all the hardware is up here. You don't really need much cushioning here, so that will do most likely. And um, all right, so over here, looks like. Okay, so this is anchored to the rest of it by this little connection right there, if you can see it. As far as adjusting, um, I'll have to read the directions to see how to adjust it. Um, but anyway, okay, what else? Look inside there, you can see there's the inside of the cup. You can see there is some foam there in the pit. All right. Okay, and then the other side, yeah, just expect. Okay, so initial impression, uh, well, I will say they're big. <laughs> um, and it seems like I said earlier, everything seems to be on the kind of bulkier side, even the cable. Um, but I assume if you're sitting at your tower anyway, this it's not going to really matter because you're going to be, you know, it's not like you're walking around with these on your head all day while you commute and whatnot. Or maybe you're going to use them for that. I'm not sure. But yeah, it does seem to be more of an at-home gaming, not so much an everyday headphone set just due to the massive size of these things. But the materials, um, this band, by the way, if I didn't say it earlier, this is metal. These are metal here. So, but yeah, it seems to be pretty well made. Um, of course, I'll go ahead and test them out. All right, so here we are. I'm at my desktop. I got the headset plugged in, but I wanted to show you, um, this is my Death Adder um, Elite mouse here on the right. And you can see, by using it as a comparison, just how big these headphones are. So, okay. Now let's get to the lighting effects. I will turn off the light here. All right. Now, first of all, one thing about this big remote, inline remote control here, is it has this big blue LED that's on if you have it plugged in, so it's easy to find if you're playing in the dark. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the LEDs by pushing the button here. And, uh, well, there they are. So, um, you get this rainbow. Um, so, here, let me hold this up like this. All right, so you can see you have the rainbow color um, kind of going all the way around. Now, this does not, I've played with it for a while, and I have not found a way to like unlock breathe mode where the LEDs come on and then fade out, or where they change colors or anything. So, at least for right now, I'm pretty sure this is all they do. And no, they do not react to the music. So, alright. Oh, I almost forgot, uh, I was going to show you the um, light for the mic. So, the way this works is when the mic, I'm going to use, of course, the remote to turn it on and off the inline remote and when you have the mic on it looks like this and uh, by the way if that's not coming up that's actually red although at least from 
here it looks kind of orange just trust me it actually looks red all right and then when you so now it's on and when you turn it off the LED goes off so red light means you're on this is a test of the microphone using my new TronSmart Glary gaming headset. Alright, so I went where the instruction manual told me to go in order to download the software for the 7.1 surround sound. I also went to TronSmart's uh, website and navigated my way to download, well, the same software. So, they both take you to the same files, which well, you'll download a RAR file, which is, you know, you'll have to unzip it. And when you unzip that RAR file, you're going to get these files. So, and the bottom one there, obviously, is the application. So I'm just going to show you what happens when you go ahead and after you've downloaded it, you try to set it up. First thing you'll get is you'll get something like this if you're running Windows 10. So you can see it's an unknown publisher, and it's warning me against allowing it to make changes. I'm just going to say yes. And now here's the actual software. Let me zoom in. All right, there we are. So, yes, this is 7.1 software. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose English, select next. Now we get this message. So, it's wanting me to dis disconnect the device. That makes sense. I've done that before for other peripherals. It wants me to exit antivirus software. Uh, Okay, and you need to restart your computer. So no problem restarting the computer or disconnecting the headset, but this tearing off my antivirus, uh, yeah. So this isn't the um, first warning I've gotten about not installing this software because it comes from, again, an unknown publisher. So if we look down a little here, we see, yeah, yeah, 7.1 gaming headset, cool. Then we see this, solid state system. Now, I didn't know what this, I mean, I kind of figured this was a company, so I went ahead and looked this company up. Let me cut. All right, here we are. Solid State System. This is their website. And apparently they are based in Shen... Uh, actually, they're based in Taiwan. And they have an office in Shenzhen. So... And okay, so headphones. And then here are their products. So... Here, if you look down here, USB speaker, USB headset controller. Check that out. So I'll let you read here. All right. So it looks to me that they're install, they're manufacturing this headset in Shenzhen, and they're using some of these controllers and components and whatnot from this company based in Taiwan. So now the reason I'm going through all this is I'm uh, hoping this helps you make your decision whether you're going to actually install this software or not um, because you will be get warnings about not installing it. So with this, maybe this is enough research for you guys to make your mind up if you want to install it or not. All right, so here I go. I got the software installed and up and running. So there are a few tabs down here, four to be exact, and then, so we'll start on the first one. Here's the equalizer setting page. And up here, I don't know if it's coming out, but these here say save, load, and about. All right, so we have EQ on, 3D on, and reset. You have four different profiles. You can adjust these sliders. Let's go to the effect. So here we have this little um, graph, and right now I have none selected, but you can evidently select different environments such as theater, bathroom, living room, and corridor. Then you go to mic, microphone, so I can go ahead and test. Let me just turn on the mic real quick. So um, click microphone, and as you can see, when I talk, the there yeah, shows a representation of how loud my volume is. Okay, so, and you can evidently adjust the gain there on the right. So turn off the microphone right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next tab, which is the virtual 7.1. So here you can see you have these little bubbles. You can actually click, hold, and drag these where you want. So, and apparently it's supposed to make it sound like that, that sound source is coming from wherever you drop this little uh, bubble. And you have quite a few of them here, so four and four, so eight total. Now, these buttons up here, this stands for clockwise and counterclockwise. And if I push these, you'll see it'll have these swing around you. And you can, in the headphones, you can hear the sound 
reflected by where these position these little bubbles are. So it sounds like the stuff is spinning around you. And of course you have counterclockwise as well. And you can stop it by unchecking it. And if you move these to somewhere, like let's just take this guy here and move him way over here, and then decide I don't want it there, you can hit reset, and it brings you back to the default. All right, so I just figured out how to test the, the surround sound demo. So we already covered you can use clockwise and counterclockwise, but to test it out, they actually give you a little sound file. You might be able to hear it in my um, headset that I have around my neck right now, but it's a B buzzing. So, but to activate it, strangely enough, you don't just click this button and have it start playing like in most demos, but instead you actually have to go to the file where you downloaded all the software and there's a file called B. So you click that, start that playing, remember to put it on uh, repeat because it's only a few seconds long, and then after you've done all that, come back here and hit this button or this button and you can yeah hear the simulation of the B going around you. It works. Um, it's not the best I've heard, but I'm not sure if that's just because the sound sample is kind of a, a little too loud, so you don't get the subtlety of it. But um, I also tried it with a, a sound clip, actually a song, um, that has a repeating section. So before I knew about the whole B thing, so I was using that. And again, it does seem to work. I have heard a little better on the surround sound, but this at least does do it to some extent. All right, so I've had the chance now to play, use these for two days and I'll go give you some feedback on what I learned after using them. So first, let's talk about this adjustment of the headband. Earlier in the video, I stated I didn't know how you were supposed to adjust it and I'd find out. Well, I did find out. The trick is you don't really adjust anything, well, short of putting your head in them. And what I mean by that is when you put your head in here, depending on how tall your head is, you're gonna see, see how this inner band, not the metal, but this inner band here, how this moves up and then goes down. So if we look into the mechanism here, you can see there he goes pulling it up, and then when I release, this whole thing slides back down. So it's kind of like a reverse hammock, right? <laughs> okay, so yes, you that's how you adjust them. There are no memory settings for the headband, because as you can see, it just springs right back down when you remove your head. And the metal, which by the way, feels really nice and smooth, but this metal here just um, controls the tension side to side. So, yep. Okay, so we're going to cover that. Now let's go into the little cable here. As I stated earlier in the video, this cable is quite thick. So you're going to have to do some kind of cable management because, at least for me, it was just draping over the <laughs> top of my desk and it is quite noticeable. So you might want to kind of figure out a way of tucking it around the corner of your PC or something like that. But anyway, the good thing is that this cable is actually quite, as you can see here, it is quite long so you will be able to get up and um, move maybe not too far but you can probably like get up and walk over to the table next to you and pick up your pop or whatever so you do have some leash here which is nice okay so we covered that now um, I don't want to delay much longer I'm gonna get into what everybody's been waiting to hear how do they sound well they sound actually very good I was surprised uh, first let's talk about the power uh, boy these things can get loud um, to give you an idea, I was playing Eternal Crusade. Um, that's a kind of futuristic uh, sci-fi um, war game, all right? And this particular one's in third person. So anyway, um, I was in the tank, and I was using the main gun, and wow, I had to actually take these off my head because it was to the point where my ears were starting to ring. So then that was at 50% volume. So when you control the volume using this, it adjusts the master volume on your PC, right? Makes sense. And so I had it set at this, or hence the master volume, set to 50 on my tower. And then the game was on its default volume setting, which I believe is maxed pretty much for everything, or at least near max. So with that, they got they got too loud. I have to take them come off. Of course, Eternal Crusade is a pretty noisy game, but even so. So take the warning on the box. Seriously, these can get loud. I'd say one more thing. For all you Warhammer 40k fans, the heavy bolter using these sounds absolutely glorious. So, okay. Now let's talk about the um, clarity. Um, the clarity is actually really good. A lot of times when these are super powerful, they don't really have good clarity, just a lot of oomph. But these actually have pretty good clarity. Now, what I like to, um, as an example of that was I was listening to the song that starts off with rain and the thunderstorm, so ambient sound effects, right? 
and these really did a good job of replicating the rolling of the thunder, not just the large clash, but then the rumbling after, so that you can, yeah, he yeah, has good clarity, so, all right, now, another great thing these do, and this is what you're going to notice the second you put these on, is the comfort, man, are they comfortable, so this whole, um, separating this from this gives it kind of the sensation of these floating on your head, so again, comfort, and then even more so are these cups. These cups are so large that your whole earlobe just goes inside this uh, well in there. And because of that, you don't get any compression on your earlobe. And uh, that allows you to wear these for hours on end and be comfortable. So, okay, everything is a plus. Now, I am going to step into one issue I had with these. And before I go into that, I want to kind of give a disclaimer here. It did, this happened to me in my setup, and I'm not sure if it's going to happen to everybody. A great example of that would be these. You may remember these. I did a review on these a while back. These, by the way, are the Dream Gear GRX 350s. Okay, and in that video, I stated how I had to scream into this boom mic in order to be heard by my teammates. Okay, and then I got responses in that video, people commenting below, and they gave me some good info. They said, well, at least for their setup, it worked great. So that shows me there can be some discrepancies from one setup to the next. And that person was also using a PC. Okay, now, the reason I bring that up is on these, you heard the mic test I did, and it sounded great, okay. But in game, and I played two games, uh, I played 2016's Doom with all the appropriate patches that have been released since, and of course Eternal Crusade. So in both of those games, even though I had the mic on and this thing was shining red, um, I would hit the push to talk on my keyboard and no one could hear me. And I thought, well, maybe they're just not responding. But as you know, in both of those games, there is some little indicator somewhere on your screen. In Eternal Crusade, it's right next to your name. And on Doom, it shows in the lower left-hand corner, you know, like your name. I think it's in white text, so you know that you're actually transmitting. Well, it didn't work for me in both cases. I didn't get any indication that I was transmitting, so I'm not sure what's going on. I was using the um, TronSmart software, so I had that running. I had 3D sound on and also um, 7.1, so don't, yeah, so surround sound. So uh, I don't know, um, but now I have to go with the fact that I only have one tower to test with. And I played two games and tried multiple runs, and it just didn't work. So I'm going to have to assume that that will be the case for everyone who uses these. All right, so in conclusion, would I recommend these? Well, this is kind of a tough one. Had the mic worked for me in-game, I would have said, without a doubt, go pick these up as fast as possible because uh, right now they are priced at a huge steal. And again, that will vary who you get them from and how you get it. But... Uh, at least, again, I got them for a huge deal, and no headphones can even touch these on price. For the quality you're getting, these are a steal. But the headphone, the mic, did not work for me. So that kind of makes it, eh, maybe not as good of a deal. So it's, yes, I know it's a kind of a yes, if, no, if, this, but kind of answer, but that's the best I can do. Um, and if you are one of those people that can do it without voice chat, please pick one of these up and give them a try and tell me know if the voice chat works for you.